I am so excited to get into this story time with Cerise this week because it is actually my first time opening up about my weight, okay? Um, my struggle with weight loss that I know millions of people can relate to around the world. It's not, it's not a story I've told. It's not a story I've felt comfortable telling. <laughs> and I know that maybe because of my recent weight loss, I definitely feel a couple of muscles popping out and I'm just like, you know what? I'm not at my goal yet, but I've had so many people asking me on the side and talking to me and I'm like, how am I going to have this incredible platform called Storytime with Cerise and not tell my own story and, you know, get a little, you know, I've had people on here that have gotten really transparent and shared uncomfortable stories and all for the benefit of others. That is why we do this here on Storytime so that you can truly see below the surface with someone else and so that you can be inspired and encouraged in your own story. So I'm going to go ahead and step out there and talk about the weight loss craze that is going around right now. I mean, it's been the talk of the town for some time now. I just discovered it last year and that is the Ozempic Wagovi, Zepbound, Manjaro. I mean, now it's just giving, it's just giving identity crisis. <laughs> like what in the many names? Welcome to Storytime with Cerise. Preview. And now, let's all welcome your host, Therese Thomas. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Woo. Come on in, come on in, take a seat. And today, we got a topic on our hands, all right? Welcome to another story time with Therese right off of the heels of Mother's Day. I pray that you all had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day weekend to all of the mothers, the mother figures, the teachers, the nurses, the aunties, the godmommies, and the mentors, and the list goes on, especially when it comes to us as women, okay? We naturally take on that motherhood figure to the children in our lives, and it is such a blessing to be able to pour into that next generation, no matter what. So don't count yourself out. Don't forget to tap yourself on the back, and don't forget to breathe. If you watch my last story time with Cerise that I did with my mom, those were some of the key things that we talked about as a mother, okay? So I am so excited to get into this story time with Cerise this week because it is actually my first time opening up about my weight, okay? Um, my struggle with weight loss that I know millions of people can relate to around the world. It's not, it's not a story I've told. It's not a story I've felt comfortable telling. <laughs> and I know that maybe because of my recent weight loss, I definitely feel a couple of muscles popping out and I'm just like, you know what? I'm not at my goal yet, but I've had so many people asking me on the side and talking to me. And I'm like, how am I going to have this incredible platform called Storytime with Cerise and not tell my own story and, you know, get a little, you know, I've had people on here that have gotten really transparent and shared uncomfortable stories and all for the benefit of others. That is why we do this here on Storytime so that you can truly see below the surface with someone else and so that you can be inspired and encouraged in your own story. So I'm going to go ahead and step out there and talk about the weight loss craze that is going around right now. I mean, it's been the talk of the town for some time now. I just discovered it last year and that is the Ozempic Wagovi, Zepbound, Manjaro. I mean, now it's just giving, it's just giving identity crisis. <laughs> like what in the many names? Like ultimately um, it's a semaglutide or terazipatide that you use to support and aid with weight loss. This medication is a GLP-1 medicine that initially its purpose is for, is for, is for was for diabetics and pre-diabetics. So you really only get insurance cover coverage in the beginning. You only qualified to be able to take this medicine 
if you were a diabetic or type 2 diabetic. And so there's just been so much skepticism around it. This is probably also why in the beginning, I really wasn't shouting it out to the world, but there's been a lot of changes since then, especially with people um, with diabetes that, you know, when others started to find out about this GLP-1 med that was causing incredible weight loss um opportunities, that's when it started to go out of stock. So of course, if you have diabetes, you're just like, guys, do not use this for weight loss. We need this for our life. You know what I mean? And I completely resonate with that. Um, so over time, they actually took the drug and they rebranded it as Zetbound. Zetbound is now, uh, it's the same ingredient, but now because it's branded differently, it can be approved for weight loss medication. And this way now some people's insurances are like, okay, if you're obese and your BMI is high, then we'll approve you for Zetbound. So I'm getting ahead of myself. There's so much I want to talk to you about. And so this is my first video. I know it won't be my last talking to you about my personal weight loss story, my struggle with weight and the Ozempic craze. So let's get into it. So people have been asking, they've been seeing it, which is really crazy because obviously because you look in yourself in the mirror every day, um, you know, you don't always see what everyone else sees, maybe a drastic race, weight loss, maybe in your face, my neck, everything, right? So people have started saying, you're looking good over there, girl. Like, oh my goodness, what have you done? What are you doing? And I don't care. I'm the type of person, if you ask me about weight loss and I've been successful, I'm going to tell you everything. I am not that person that's going to be over here fronting like, yeah, I've been jogging around the block 45 times a day and you know it's hard, but you just got to get your mind in it. No, <laughs> you are not going to, I'm not going to leave out the fact that I have had some support with medication as well. Um, so I'm super excited to do this video because I'm having so many people ask me about my weight loss and I said, well, Siri, story time, it's time to interview yourself. So I'm ready and let's get into it. Okay. Um, I have been struggling with my weight since I realized weight was a thing. <laughs> oh, the precious days of childhood where you just walked around not caring about your little old gut and your little old fupa. <laughs> you know, what do you call a baby fupa? You know, a fupina? I don't know. Okay. But um, you didn't care. You was just out there. I was in junior, I would say before junior, elementary school. I think, you know, when you're like a young kid, some kids will start to pick up the weight, right? The junk food, whatever. I don't know. But I know in elementary school, I look back at my little cute pictures. I used to wear little jumpers. My little... <laughs> I always just had a little extra meat on my skin, right? Um, and that's just somehow how, sometimes just how we're built. There, I do believe there's some genetics a part of that, um, you know, but I still do believe that even with that, no matter how you've grown up, you st it still as an individual will have a choice to make for yourself, right? Um, you can really decide to change that. You can break some generational habits and you can really change that for yourself. Will it take a lot more work? Will it take some medications potentially? Yes, um, but it is your choice, right? Um, so I think I would say around... Junior high school, high school, I started looking around and I was like, wait a minute, I don't look like her. You know, this is when you become a teen and you start comparing yourself and you start getting, maybe hearing little comments from another person, like, you know, about you and the way you look. And that's when I really started to hone in on that insecurity. And of course, because I have a great relationship with my mom, I would share that with her. And I kept telling her, I want to do something. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight. And this is in high school, right? Um, so she's looking at me because she's a mom. And she's like, you don't need to. You're young, you know? But she also was a mom who listened. So she put me on this very healthy diet that I requested. Because I guess, and I love that. Because as a mom, it's like, look, if you're not going to get involved, then they're going to do it anyway. <laughs> and that was always the, the the motto of my mom. She's like, let me get involved here because if I see she really wants to do something and that went with everything, the boys, you know, she's like, I'd rather, I'd rather be right there. I'd rather know about it, have them come over the house. Let me get to know them so that I could be a part of this, right? So my mom was very, very involved and active in my life. And I remember probably within a month, because I'm a teen, I lost like 15 pounds. And everybody was like, oh my goodness, 
look at you. And I felt comfortable in my skin. I moved on. My mother told me this. I was, I think I did like, I think all I did was replace one meal. I think it was breakfast. I had like a slim fast. <laughs> okay. And then my mom would like make me a healthy dinner. And within like three weeks, I was, you know, and I guess because I was very active at that time too. So lost the weight. And honestly, because I think I still fluctuated throughout time, high school, college, I was just always so self-conscious of my, my weight. I was never the skinny mini. I was slim at times, but then like, if I wasn't, if, if I didn't keep my eye on my weight, <laughs> all right, that slim had another letters, a couple of new letters added to it. All right. It was like slim more. I don't know. Right. So, um, I always was conscious about my weight. Um, but I will say that there was a time when I finally got to college that I was good. I, I lost, I, I had gained and then I lost a little bit and my mom would always tell me, she'd be like, uh-uh, stay right there. Don't lose no more weight. Cause she knew my body. Like I said, everybody's body is not meant to look like this super skinny. You know what I'm saying? I just always wanted to just be slim. You know what I'm saying? And in college, I held on to that. And let's get into this, okay? So how did I really start to struggle with my weight in my adult years? Well, I listed it out right here. I fell in love. I got stressed. I got lazy. I got comfortable. I got emotional. And I got pregnant all in <laughs> the last 15 years. Okay, let me tell y'all something. That falling in love weight is real. Like I got a man and I started cooking for him. I wasn't looking at nothing, but I, this food better taste good. Give me the extra butter, the extra cheese, everything. We started going out to eat all the time. I mean, it was just like unlimited dates. Come on, you got somebody like, let's do this. We weren't, it's not like, I mean, now if you meet somebody who's like a gym guru, that that's, that's it right there, you know, or you both are gym gurus, then you probably won't go down the path that I did. But me and Daniel are foodies. And then we met. <laughs> it was just the perfect storm, right? We are big, huge foodies. And I'm not saying you can't be healthy and be a gym guru and not be a foodie. Well, we were not gym gurus, okay? And we were not, we didn't have habits of exercising. We were just foodies, okay? So we fell in love, we dated and we dated and we dated and we dated. And I just slowly gained and I got comfortable because I had a man and look, okay, that's another story time, but I felt safe. It was my first relationship where I felt safe to be myself, to express myself. So I got comfortable. I knew this man loved me through and through. That's a safe space. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm just like, oh, oh, you love me, love me. You know, so I got to really let down my hair, take off my hair. I just felt safe with him. You know what I mean? Um... Uh, I got lazy. There, there's really no, there's really no excuse for that one. <laughs> I just got lazy. Like, you know, oh, I could go to the gym or I could watch this next episode of Grey's Anatomy. You know, it's just, you know, so I got lazy. And then as I got older, I realized that this thing called adulting is for the birds. I got bills. I got stressed. I got uh, annoyed, you know, and I'm just talking about life, you know, I got stressed, you get older, you start realizing new responsibilities. Um, so I was a bit of an emotional eater. Um, and then as time went on, again, I just kept trying to lose, I would lose and then I would gain it, then I would lose and I tried everything. You know how you've heard them say, I've tried everything in the book, Weight Watchers, Them Watchers, Me Watchers, I tried it all. Okay, Nutrisystem, Child, I tried it all. Okay, I did this thing called the, the HCD, HCG diet. You were taking hormones. My mother, my mother couldn't stand it. You know, stop taking stuff. You know what I mean? Um, eating 500 calories a day. I lost a lot of weight on that. It gains it right back. I put one piece of bread in my mouth after all of that. <laughs> and I woke up the next day and I was 50 pounds heavier. How? You know what I mean? So I tried everything. And so I was always fluctuating with my weight, but as I fluctuated, I only got bigger and bigger and bigger. My weight just continued to, you know, there was <laughs> out. And, <coughs> excuse me, with that 
came even more emotional eating because now I'm feeling extremely self-conscious. I had situations where I had to be on camera and I'm looking back at myself like, oh my goodness, this is my first love being on camera. How can I not be confident with myself and be on camera and fully be able to shine? How? That's going to be my question throughout this whole video. How? Right? So I got more emotional, um, but I was still in love. 15 years later, we, we're still together. We married 13 together, 15. And then we got pregnant. Child, let me tell you something. Pregnancy for me was everything. I never felt so secure in my body because I didn't have to think about my stomach. <laughs> I didn't have to think about my belly because my baby was in my belly. So everywhere I went, I was just like feeling so confident. Like, yeah, everything else looked cute. My belly's out because I'm pregnant. So what? Then I had the baby. She wasn't in my belly anymore. And the belly was still there. And the belly was, the belly was different, right? Um, and let me just talk to, let me just talk to you. I'm not even going to say my ladies because there are men that go through, um, there, almost all men, they don't maybe vocalize it like us, go through that self image and that weight. I, you know, I learned that speaking to my husband, like he might put on a shirt and then switch it. And I'm like, why did you change your shirt? He's like, uh-uh, I didn't like the way I... I'm like, he look... In my eyes, I'm like, you look so handsome. You know what I'm saying? So um, what I'm going to say is I had fibroid surgery before I got pregnant. And I had to have the invasive surgery. It was like a... It was an actual C-section. So they had to, you know, cut me down there. And it was a very, very invasive, big surgery. But the reason why I say that is because then I got pregnant and, and I had to have another C-section. So I had to get cut twice in my belly, in my lower belly area, my fupa section. And what does that do? That weakens the muscles tremendously. So now after I gave birth, after two major C-section type surgeries, I had a beast of a belly down here. <laughs> that joint wasn't budget. I don't care. You could do abs, chow. That joint was just, you know, just... <laughs> so that was very um discouraging for me because I just felt like my belly felt different it wasn't strong but that's my fault because my mother would be like wear the belly band start moving because you can't you got to get those muscles active again you know what I'm saying you got to get them going so the post-pregnancy weight is where I was at my highest obviously for a lot of women um, of course, me, me and my, and, and again, this goes out to the men too. Men have babies and they be stressed and emotional eating too. Okay. Um, and that's when I was like, okay, weight loss surgery. You know, that's always the out, right? I've heard many successful stories about weight loss, sur weight loss surgery. Of course, once again, my mom wasn't the biggest fan of it, but the more we looked into it and, you know, she's like, all right, like, you know, but I still wanted to have another child. So not yet. So I still just had to walk around with this weight. <clears throat> it just wasn't hitting. Um, but I knew that there was light at the end of the tunnel. I knew for me and my passion, which is being on camera, um, that I was always going to have to lose the weight. There was no question for me. I knew there was going to have to be something. And I knew for me, the answer was weight loss surgery, even though I tried. And just to try to maintain and lose. And after pregnancy, I dealt with hypertension. So I started realizing, well, if I want to have a baby again, I still have to lose some weight. I still have to be a level of healthy because I can't get pregnant in a worse condition than I was when I first got pregnant. I was high risk the first time. What am I going to be now? You know, so I'm like, listen, you be asking God to do stuff for you, but are you doing your part, right? I'm like, Lord, bless this womb, open me up. And I'm over here like, hi, let me get um a large pepperoni pizza with the extra cheese. Yeah, the extra cheese. And I got a free coupon for extra sauce. <laughs> and I'm not, please, sir, and I want to make this disclaimer. I am not food shaming. I am not fat shaming. This is my story. This is my perspective on myself. These are things that are real to me. This is how I, I felt about my journey. 
I just got to put that out there. I'm the one that sometimes asks God to bless me and my body and order a large cheese pizza. And that goes for other scenarios in life, right? We can't pray for a husband and then be out or a wife and then be out here not taking therapy, not healing, not growing and not dealing with old issues in your life that are still rearing its head that you don't really realize have a hold on you. That's another story time. Okay, so let's continue. So I was battling and wanting God to bless us again with another baby. And I was also borderline pre-pre-diabetic. So I was right before being a pre-diabetic, which was just like baffling to me because I'm like, I'm still in my 30s. What's happening? Um, I'm losing control, right? So one day in my woman's group that I speak at, uh, a lady shared her journey of weight loss, and this was last year in 2023. And because it was so compelling to me, I hit her up on the side. I said, I'm just curious, you know, what did you do to lose all that weight? She said one word to me, Ozempic. And I said, Ozia? I ain't never heard of that. Oz Ozana? What can you, what is that? She said that word to me. She said, look it up, talk to your PCP. I Googled it. I said, oh, okay. I said, oh, medicine. Eh. You know what I'm saying? In my mind, I'm just like, I don't know, you know. Um, but of course, that's the first thing I did. I spoke to my doctor and loved my doctor. She was so supportive. She was just like, let's look into this. I. She said, yes, there, there it is. But she said, it's really hard to get your hands on. This is my first time. This is in 2023. She's like, but I'll prescribe it to you and just try to get your hands on it. That was like the, the, the beginning. She said, if you can't get your hands on it, come back to me. I have another way for you that I can share. And I'm like, another way? What's she doing behind us? Now let me stop. You know, so um, got it prescribed, called every pharmacy within like 50 miles. Because the more I researched it, the more I wanted it. The more I started to see testimonies and the more I was like, I got to try this. I got to try this. And I even went, cause I'm like, I'm trying to get pregnant. Like, should I, should I try and, and, or should I just get pregnant? Should I try to just get pregnant and then take this? And even my, uh, OBGYN, um, my doctor who gave birth, helped me give birth to Persia. She looked at me, she was like, you should try it. Lose the weight first. Then let's, then let's try to have the baby. I was like, oh, okay. Oh my God. I was just talking to my cousin and I was crying because we were just talking about like when you go to the doctor and they're so nice to you and then you leave and you look at, look at the doctor's notes <laughs> and she said, you read it and it's like the worst things about yourself. This person is highly obese, dying and never, I was crying. <coughs> Shout out to my cousin, Maya Mayo Bass. Um, that was so funny because it's so true. Every time I read it, I'm just like, I thought we were friends. Why do you write that about me? But it's all facts. It's all facts. Um, so anyways, with all that being said, um, I couldn't get my hands on it at all. I tried it. I tried, I got discouraged and I tried, and I got discouraged and I'm like, why is everybody on this? I learned about people are just like, you know, stop trying to get it, leave this medication to people with diabetes that are, went back to my doctor. And basically what she told me to do was look for the generic version and subscribe to getting it from a compounding pharmacy. And I was like, oh, Okay. I said, Hey, if my doctor prescribes it, I will try it. If, if I'm talking, and, and again, if you're watching this and you're interested, always talk to your doctor first. This is what they say. I am not a doctor. I actually never want to be a doctor. I am not a nurse. Never want to be a nurse. My grandmother's a nurse. My mom was a nurse. My aunt was a nurse. Not in me. I can't touch people in that way. I can't do the, mm, I can't do anything. And then my mom thinks it's hilarious. Cause like, if there's anything going on that's sick or something's going, even with my own self, I'll just be like, Ooh, I cannot. So I wanted to emphasize that so that you talk to your doctor. Don't take anything that I say as whatever. This is my experience. And I'm encouraging you to, if you're interested in this, um, to talk to your doctor and get actual information for your body, right? So I, I got my, so long story short, got connected with the compounding pharmacy and the nurse practitioner there, had my little, you always have like a little video with them. So they kind of interview, see if you qualify for the meds. They sent me my generic version. And basically it's like generic version. When you go into CVS, instead of getting Tylenol, you get the CVS uh, acetamine, you know what I mean? Like you get the CVS version. That's basically what I got. It's the generic 
oh, you know, version, but you still need to qualify for it. And you still need to make sure you're taking your labs, you're talking to your doctor and you have a nurse practitioner that is helping you through this. Do not do this on your own and do not get it from a sketch place. Um, so moving on, I discovered this very excited. I did a lot of research. One of the biggest people who helped me understand this medicine and she is on YouTube. So I would also suggest uh, after talking to your doctor, check her out. She's called Countess on YouTube. I will tag her under this. She is incredible. When I say she, I think she's already lost 85 pounds and she has journeyed, vlogged her journey since day one. Um, and she's done it all. She She's so incredible. So um, I got all of my information just in my, and even just my comfort and confidence in this medicine by simply watching her videos on YouTube. Okay, she is all about uh, the Zep Bound, Wagovio, Zempic, Terazipatide, Semaglutide, all of that. If you have questions, she's got answers and she will always say, Please do your own research. Please go to your doctor because she's not a doctor either. She's just incredible. Um, so shout out to Countess. Um, I would even email her sometimes and she would get back to me. I'm like, but what about this? And what do you think? So she's wonderful. She probably, you know, d cannot directly email this time. So many people um, are on her channel, but she really is very personable and she'll get back to you if she can. So that was one of the people that I connected with um, to do my research with the Ozempic. It is so important with anything that you start that you get information for your doctor, but also get real life testimonies from people to know like how, what is this? Because one of the biggest things I was nervous about were the side effects. People kept saying extreme nausea, diarrhea, you know, um, fatigue. And I'm like, I could do the diarrhea and the fatigue. I know. But... I can't take nausea. Like I said, I have this like gag reflex. When I see someone gagging, I'll gag. It's just, just thinking about it right now made my throat shake. So I said, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do nausea, you know? Um, but I wind up saying, you know, they say it affects everyone differently, but there was, um, so after talking to them, I got the terazipatide, which again is just the generic version of Ozempic. Um, Wagovi Manjaro, let me say, because then there's semaglutide. Um, and I got it. it. It comes, you get your syringes. So unlike the Zepbound and the Manjaro that come, you know, you always see them holding like a pen, like an actual pen, but it's like, a, it's like thick pause. You know what I'm saying? It's when you get the compound version, you ain't getting no pen. <laughs> And I'm going to show you here, um, you get like a vial, you get a little tiny vial and that's your medication in there. And this is where you become your own doctor. You've got to overcome your fear. You get uh, 10 syringes because they give you enough based on what you order that'll last you for a month or two. And you have to pull out your own medicine. You have to measure it, follow the chart, follow the instructions. And I say this is a good, I won't even say good and bad. I'll say good and inconvenient. The inconvenient part is just like, if you get a pen, you don't have to measure. You just do it. You stick yourself in the allotted locations and you're done. The inconvenient part is simply like, you have to take out the syringe. You have to make sure your hands are, I mean, you turn into a doctor and you know me, I'm like washing my hand for 45 seconds to 60 seconds. You got to take the alcohol pad, make sure you're rubbing the top of the vial for 30 seconds. Then make sure you take the, another alcohol pad and rub the area that you're going to be sticking yourself in. Um, and it's just, you know, like, it's just a, it's like a, it's like a personal appointment. And then you have to turn the vial a little bit so that you can stick the needle in and then pull it out slowly and up to, up into the, the amount of unit, units that you're on. So that's, that's the only inconvenient. But the good thing about that is when you're on this medicine, and many of you may know, you, they start you at a very low dose just to get your body introduced to it and to see how you react. And then over time, they say, they normally say every month you titrate up, which means you increase the dosage. But with a vial, 
And what I've learned from watching the Countess YouTube videos is to not rush. You can go, it starts at 2.5 and it ends at 15 milligrams. They never prescribe more than 15 milligrams. And you go from 2.5 to 5 to 7.5 to 10 to 12.5 to 15. And one of the things that I learned from her is don't rush to 15 because once your body gets used to that amount of medicine, eventually your appetite will probably slowly start to come back. So, and even just financially and that because things are not in stock, try to stay on the dosage. If it's still working, stay at 2.5. I've seen people that have lost like almost a hundred pounds and they stayed at five milligrams for like the entire 12 months or entire eight months. And I kind of wish, I think in the beginning, before I really started getting into her videos, I was rushing because the first like month I lost like one pound a week. Now, let me put, be clear. I didn't change any of my habits. <laughs> I was still eating what and when I wanted, okay? But what I will say is I think maybe how much changed because I remember one day getting nauseous because I ate too late and I ate too much. And I was like, okay, that's different. The middle of the night, I had the worst night ever. I felt like I couldn't sleep. My stomach was upset. And I said, well, I won't do that again. But I was still losing very slowly, um, and so, you know, make sure you are talking to your doctor and the nurse practitioner assigned to you. Um, I do join Fridays again. I learned about that program. It's a program called join Fridays. I learned about that through Countess. Um, uh, I didn't start there. I started with my, my, the one that my doctor recommended. And then I told her I was transitioning because financially it was, uh, more, it was cheaper. <laughs> um, but still a very reputable company. Um, and that's what you want to make sure. You want to make sure you're attached to a reputable company. You don't want no suspect pharmacy sending you this stuff, okay? And there's more to that. Like I said, do your research. But I did get it. I got the vial. Once you understand how to um, remove the medication and measure and know what you're up to, it's a breeze. It takes me literally about three minutes, if that, if that. I'm just really extra, so I'm always just like counting with the alcohol pads and rubbing, like washing again. And I'm just very careful with that. You know, you want to be careful. You don't want no germs whenever you are dealing with injections, okay? And this is my first time injecting myself. I've never injected myself with anything. So some of you might have, um, experience with that. I know that my husband takes Dupixent, which is an inje injection for eczema. So he is very familiar. He still hates it to this day, which is hilarious. Me, it's not bad. I don't feel like it hurts. You might get like a little, um, a, a little sight, a little, uh, what do you call them? What's the word I'm looking for? A little like, um, patch sometimes. I get it sometimes. A little, and it can be a little itchy, but it goes away. If anything worse than that, definitely contact your doctor. Okay. So, um, <sighs> I've been watching videos, watching other people inject it because they give you the, the six places to, you can inject it. I learned that you have to rotate so that you can, you know, for some reason, the rotation also helps your body respond to it as if it's a new injection instead of feeling like you have to titrate all the way up. Um, and yeah, those are my weekly injections. I started doing it in December. And um, this kind of brings me to the end of my video. Um, I really wanted to share this part, right? So like I said, in the beginning, I was losing about one pound a week. And I was like, eh, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, I had to wake up. I was just like, you know what? I have to change my habits. And I'm, I was watching videos, especially, like I said, Countess YouTube videos, you, uh, Countess on YouTube. And she's like, you got to check. She has a whole free meal plan. You, When I say if you are considering doing this, you have to subscribe to her channel ASAP. She got Because it, it ain't me. I'm not going to give you the, the details and the rundown. I'm just sharing my personal experience. But she gives you the details and the rundown of how to best get the best out of this. You're going to, if you're not, if your insurance is not covering it, you're going to be paying for it. So you need to make sure you're getting the biggest bang for your buck. Okay. Um, I want to say this. I am officially down 52 pounds, 52 pounds. Um, ever since December of 2023, I feel like I could probably be another 20 if I didn't waste so much time the first two months that I was on the medication. I really just did not change my habits. I barely started exercising. I barely changed what I was eating. 
Finally, I woke up one day and it's just like weight loss surgery or anything you're going to do. You still have to make a lifestyle change. You still have to get your mind mindset in place. This medication is not going to get you anywhere if you're taking it and you're still eating poorly and you're not moving. Okay. I learned that and I feel like I wasted the first two months. Um, because then I got connected with this gr other girl that I saw on, uh, young lady, I'm sorry, that I saw on Instagram just popped up and that's kicking weight with Keisha. I'm going to attach all of this, the program, Countess and kicking weight with Keisha. Okay. She had a, she had a challenge coming up, a one month challenge. I was like, let me join this. All of a sudden the weight started to melt off because I had to change my eating habits. And for me, it was, it's really just been intermittent fasting, just like a lot of OMAD, one meal a day, intermittent fasting, keto meals, and then little challenges here and there. Like right now I'm doing a water to a watermelon fast. Um, I know, but like, it's wonderful. And I do feel like the medication, especially as my doses got higher, definitely helped me to maintain. One of the things that I noticed, um, and the term that I learned from watching the Countess YouTube videos was the term food noise. Once I started the medication, my food noise stopped. What is food noise? Well, for me, I will wake up in the morning thinking about what I'm going to eat and go to sleep thinking about what I ate and what I'm going to eat again. <laughs> How, especially if I was like trying to watch my weight, food no noise can still be like, well, if I go there tomorrow, maybe I could do that and, and not get the bread. You're like anxious. It's just, you're always thinking about food. Soon as I started this medication, it's like the food noise just stopped. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not overly concerned about what am I going to eat later? What are we going to eat? What am I going to do? It just stopped. I'm not praising and over praising or putting food in this idolistic place. Okay. Where I'm just, it's constantly on my mind. You understand me? If you know, you know. Okay. And so when the food noise stopped for me, it cleared up space for me to think about things that actually matter. First of all, putting God fully back on the throne, Jesus, where he belongs and allowing me to really focus in my life. And I really appreciated that more than anything. I have not felt that. And this is why there is an, a debate about, well, hey, people that struggle with obesity, you know, um, is it a disease? Are the GLP-1 receptors not telling their body that they're full? And, um, you know, do, is there something wrong with it? I do believe in some. You see some very young, young kids being very obese. You know what I'm saying? And for some of them, there could be an issue of communication from their their brain to their body, not telling them that they're full. For me, I think it also comes with abusing the fact that my body would tell me I'm full, but I just was being greedy. So I would use that in my stress and emotional eater. And just like with the Holy Spirit, if you keep ignoring the Holy Spirit, eventually you kind of just don't hear him. He kind of fades out and the other voices become louder. So it's whatever you decide to feed and starve. And I just wasn't listening to that full receptor where I think I abused it and maybe even damaged it. So this medication has truly helped me restore that. Understood? Um, so that's what I, I, I learned. Joining Kicking Weight with Keisha was another life changer. I can't just say it's just been the medication. Uh, you're talking about helping with mindset and understanding what insulin resistance is and what does a fatty liver do. Like understanding this stuff is a game changer. To just follow something blindly and not have the information, you're going to fall off. But when you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, like we always say, know your why, there is a, a, a much larger motivation factor behind that because you can literally, you know what you're doing to your body and it feels good. As God has given us these bodies to honor, these temples to honor, it just simply feels good. Like I don't need to just lose weight, but I also need to treat my body well. What am I putting in my body? When am I putting it? How much am I putting in my body? You know, I got my little concoction right here. It looks gross, I'm sure. But this is, I love like, this makes me feel good. It's taking care of my body. It's giving my body what it needs. I started taking multivitamins, probiotics, um, B12, and the list goes on. And I've just never felt better, right? And then, of course, there's those scale victories, but the non-scale victories are everything. Feeling good about yourself, feeling good in your clothes, obviously having more energy, 
looking good and knowing that you're taking care of this body that you're that the, the Lord has blessed us with, right? So that really kick, kicking weight with Keisha combined with that medication. And so that's why I encourage you, join a group, find a group. Don't just take the medication, change your life by changing your thinking, okay? Get it together, all right? Um, watch that food noise going down. Now, I will say this too. Sometimes, in the, even with the medication, I get hungry. But because I'm a part of the Kicking Weight with Keisha group, there are things that we can and cannot do. And I understand hangry on a whole new level. <laughs> um, there was a lot that I understood. <coughs> There was a lot that I had to learn about myself as far as getting angry that I'm hungry um, and understanding that even if I was to eat, I can't eat like I used to. So there was still this void there. And I had to realize that um, this medication also helped me expose the root of my poor self-image, my insecurities and my anxiety right? Because when we're eating, we're covering that up. Oh, I'm anxious. I'm eating. Oh, I have poor self-image. I'm eating. Oh, I have insecurities. I'm eating. But now I'm not eating. And so those insecurities and that anxiety and that self-image is like, hey girl, so what are we going to do? Right? And this is why you do have some people that unfortunately they switch from food to like a drug. Maybe they'll start smoking cigarettes or they'll start drinking a little more or they'll start taking something because that anxiety or that whatever they were using that food for, now your body's still like, hey, I'm still feeling this. So for me, as a believer, I learned quickly that I could not do this without God. I was grateful that God pointed me in this direction, but I realized that I had to replace food with the right things. Because if I didn't, I was going to look for other things to kind of simmer that anxiety and that insecurity. And I had to play, replace food with prayer, projects, and productivity. That is my life. <laughs> I am praying. I am in my word. I am doing projects that I know, like, especially house projects, okay? When I'm not working, I am like, okay, let me redo this room. Let me focus here. And I am productive, okay? If I've got a busy work day, then that's where I keep my mind. If not, then <clears throat> I don't know what I would, you know, try to allow to fill those places. And the prayer and being in my word helps God speak to those, the root of that anxiety and the root of those insecurities. So it's not that I'm just distracting myself with projects and productivity, but the prayer allows me to cling to the feet of Jesus so I can receive healing. And then of course, therapy, honey, okay? Do not forget therapy. It is so important that when you are going through a major life um, switch, not just weight loss, that you have some therapy, a part of that to help you understand yourself better. Because if you think you know yourself, you are fooling yourself, right? Allow God to guide you, get therapy if you need, and then fill those places with good things. I really, really wanted to say that in this video, that yes, Ozempic and the weight loss craze and this and that, but what are you doing in place of that? What are you doing in place of that? Because you can lose all the weight and, and still feel bad about yourself and still feel high anxiety and insecurities, right? So you need to be able to, while you're healing your body, you're also healing what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. <sighs> all right, well, and <clears throat> that leads me to where I'm at. Learning to truly love myself on the journey and not just le loving the cerise that's at the destination. Because I used to always just be like, man, when I get there, look at her, she's amazing. Instead of being able to look myself in my eyes today and say, hey girl, I know you're not at your goal. I know you're not at your destination, but look at you today. Look where you've come from you're amazing. And that is so key being on a journey like this, where you are not just loving the girl on the other side, but or the guy on the other side, but you're loving yourself right here, right now. Okay. Um, so that's it. I'm very excited. I'm ha I'm happy. I feel great. Um, <coughs> I'm filled with joy. I know the cough. It just made it seem like everything I just said was a lie. When people cough while they talk, don't believe them. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yeah, so that's what I wanted to share. I wanted to just get into the logistics in the beginning. Like this is how I struggle with my weight. 
This is how I discovered it. These are the people that I lean on to help me through it from God to my doctor to uh, Countess on YouTube to kicking it with Keisha, Keisha, Keisha Gibson on social media um, to my support system around me. Obviously, my husband and my family, my goal in life ultimately is, of course, to feel good and look good, but to set a standard in my own household for my family and my children to lead very healthy lives. I want God to do big things with my life and our lives, and I want to be able to live to experience it, right? So I wanted to share the logistics of that, but I also wanted to share like, hey, when you're going through a major change in your life, understand that there's going to be a potential void and you want to be able to make sure that you're filling it with prayer, projects, and productivity. And it'll really just change your life. You Because even with, with the prayer, obviously God just guides you and he fills you. But with the project, as well with the project, you're just like also seeing you get your life together. That closet that you were supposed to clean, that that boiler room that's like got old stuff from 1999 in there, your car that you were supposed to take to the car. It's like from the smallest projects to the biggest projects, you are decluttering not just your life. I've heard my pastor say many times when you a uh, clean up uh, the the way your room looks is many times how your mind looks. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's how I feel about my house. The way your house looks, it many times it kind of gives away how your mind looks. If it's all over the place, like you're probably all over the place mentally. So the projects have really helped me to just understand where I am in life. What am I doing? What is God asking me to do? What's next? Um, and then just remaining productive. It's literally just stemming from the verse, allowing yourself to keep your mind on things that are pure, holy, righteous, because also in that weight loss thing, I don't want to lose myself. I don't want to forget, you know, who's in control here. I don't want to forget what's the purpose of me losing this weight, not just to put on a cute dress from Shein, but to pray, to allow myself to be able to glorify God with my body and the gifts that he's giving me confidently on a whole new level. So I hope you guys were encouraged. I hope you guys received something from this story time with Cerise. Oh, Zempic, Wagovi, Zepbound. It is all over the place. Um, But don't get caught up in the craze. That's just where I'm at with it. Don't get caught up with in the craze. Just understand what God has for you, where he's taking you. Uh, talk to the people in your life, your doctor. Do it and understand that if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, it's all good. Um, but whatever it is, whatever goal that you are trying to reach, just make sure you get understanding. Make sure you understand where you come from. And acknowledge who you are today. Acknowledge the journey. Don't just love yourself and wait for you. You know, some people wait to do things. Uh, you know, while I, w I was living in some serious high anxiety and deep insecure and even depression many times while I was still pursuing my passions and my gifts, while I still had to look back and look at myself on camera, I didn't wait. I didn't stop. You know, even though I wanted to, and I want to encourage you, don't, whatever, if God is asking you to do that thing and you're like, well, I'm just going to wait until I feel good about myself. No, do it now. Don't worry. Sometimes that's the first step that takes you into getting you where you need to be. So love yourself now. Don't wait until you get to the other side because it's the journey, it's the journey, it's the journey that is going to grow you that matters the most. All right. Well, I will see you back next week with another story time with Therese. Thanks so much, guys, for sticking around don't forget to subscribe and share it guys we are out here every week love you guys